It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers, and today's video is with Aldo Kane talking about working inside a volcano. Listen to this story with Aldo Kane about working and how he got the job inside a volcano. It is absolutely crazy. Today's video was sponsored by Audible.com, where you can get Aldo's book that has this story in for free. Just follow the link in the description. They are giving away a free copy of this book um, at Audible.com. I fully recommend going to do it. Uh, but yeah, before that, let's jump into this video with Aldo Kane. The military part of my life is, you know, I, I owe almost everything to it because it's given me the confidence and the ethos and the courage of my own convictions to, to do what I want to do now. Um, you know, it certainly doesn't, the military part doesn't mean I'm any better, you know, at anything than anyone else. But I think in my own head and confidence, you know, I, I know that I passed one of the hardest infantry training in the world at the age of 16. That means, you know, in my head, I have this confidence that, you know, I can, I can do most things, you know, I, I just haven't been taught most of them. Or, you know, if someone teaches me something, then I'm, I'm very focused and dialed on learning that thing. Um, but the thing that made me join the Scouts was adventure. The thing that made me join the Marines was adventure. And then after I left and I started messing around and went offshore, I then started to formulate this idea that I would then work in the outdoors. Not as an outdoors instructor, because there's too many people doing that and, and you're very qualified and it's not well paid. And, and also, it, so it didn't give me that, you know, I didn't want to be taking groups out on the hill. And, you know, I, I led a lot of expeditions in South America and all over the place with, with young adults. And it just, like, I didn't quite know television existed yet, but all these parts were starting to like slot together. I had all my training, that was ready. I was like ready for whatever job came my way. Um, I'd spent all that time offshore getting ready for that. I um, had the confidence of my background in the military, so that was all done and dusted. And then someone asked me if I could get a film crew inside an active volcano for a TV program, and I was just like, yes, I can do that. And, and then it just like the penny dropped. I was ready. I didn't know what I was preparing for, but when that job opportunity came along, it then suddenly clicked. Everything clicked into place from scouts right the way through, like over that 15 years to taking that job. And, and it, you know, it, it then looking back on it, it was like, that's what I was preparing for. And again, like I was saying earlier, you know, when you're when you're too busy with the minutiae of everyday life, three kids, you know, your job, 12 hour shifts, blah, blah, like you don't have time to stick your head above the parapet and think about tomorrow. Never mind next week, never mind next year. Um, but that's what the offshore part of it gave me was that time to then work out this plan. And, and so when I eventually got to doing that job in a volcano, it was like, all of this just went doo -doo 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 and into position. And then it, it was just like, fine. So I went to Congo, got a BBC film crew inside one of the most active volcanoes in Africa, biggest lava lake on earth, epic, epic sort of environment to be in. And it used every ounce of my skill set to get the crew in and out safely. And then I sort of came back and had a couple of weeks off and, and just like, I was like, this is amazing. Because I, I never watched television, and to be honest, it never crossed my mind that television was a, you know, an industry that, that you could work in. Um, and so it just, and it was right at the time when Adventure TV was picking up and, and getting busy. And, and so it, with all the preparation and things I was doing, it just, I was perfectly placed at that time to, to get stuck into it. And, and, and I'm not saying that I'm, you know, there are a million people out there better qualified than me in, cave diving, then skydiving, in climbing, and all these things. But, you know, my main focus is more of a, like, step back. I have a jack-of-all-trades basic understanding of these adventurous activities, um, but I also have a more holistic approach to looking after people and crews and making sure that they're safe in these extreme environments. What was, what was the first experience seeing the finished product? You know, like, the shots that the crew had got? Like, was it, was that, did that mean anything to you once it had um, come out? It did. Yeah, it did because, you know, you, you spend 
three weeks inside an active volcano, risking your life to get all of this together and it's all compressed into eight minutes of footage and you just think, how does that, like, how does that even compute? But I've been doing this now for 13, 14 years. Um, so I understand the process now and I'm much more involved in that process. You know, my job really is, is you know, with you guys, it's with the crew, it's everyone working together to get this end product. Um, and whether that's in jungles or up in the high mountains of the Himalayas or way down in a cave system, you know, where, wherever it is on earth or dealing with narcos in, in the jungles of South America, um, it's the same, it's about can-do attitude and, and looking after people. And, and it, it's, it goes back to what I was thinking about Acres of Diamonds. It's like, what service can I provide someone else, you know, by adding value to someone else or something else? And it's like enlightened self-interest. You know, I get to do all these cool jobs. I get to gob off about it on social media and have cool pictures with cool people in cool places. But really, you know, you're helping other people achieve their goals and achieve their um, ambitions and that, you know, that's quite important. Definitely. And I think, I mean, I, I'm, this is our thing that we do, but I think film and documentaries and stuff is some, some of the most inspirational stuff for people. It really can, like, perspective on volcanoes. I, I, I've not watched the piece personally, but, you know, it, it really, really can make a difference. And obviously, that's an integral part that you're doing. It just doesn't happen if they haven't got someone who can do what you're doing. Yeah, and uh, so I've, I've worked a lot with investigative journalists. So during the Ebola outbreak in West Africa, um, which I talk about in the book, or chasing down um, tiger traffickers in Southeast Asia or, or doing the narco stuff in South America. Um, and these guys using the medium of, of film and journalism, you know, have, have so, you know, they're giving a voice to, for example, tigers that, that don't have a voice, you know, and they're being slaughtered at a rapid rate of knots um, for, for luxury goods. So, you know, if you if you can find a way of telling that story and telling it effectively by you know film, then you know I, you have much more reach than you do any other way. I think. Mm, no, definitely. I mean, the you've just mentioned a, a handful of things there: um, cartel, um, those polar bears, you know, tigers, lions. Uh, it's just crazy. But one of the things you've gravitated towards the end is animal welfare. Like, is, is, and is that something that you're passionate about yourself? Yeah, so with, with the anti-poaching stuff that I've done, so I, I kind of got to the point where I'd done a lot of stuff in the military and, um, and wanted to give something back in a way that, you know, to, to, for example, animals that don't have that voice and to be able to train anti-poaching units. And um, I was down in South Africa doing that for a while. And, um, and the more I was doing that, and I'd been working in television a while, I thought there's, there's opportunity here to tell stories of, you know, of, for example, trafficking. Um, and that's how I got involved with uh, doing the Tiger film. That was a BBC investigation into um, Tiger trafficking. But, but it was much more about using my skills. Again, what, what can I do with my skills that, that provides a service to someone else? So um, we were helping the EIA, Environmental Investigation Agency, with some of their um, operations and investigations. So it's, yeah, it's about it's about again not what can I get out of this, but what can I give. And I always find that's a more useful way of approaching situations. Is what can I do? What can I give? How can I help? Um, and eventually that all comes back round to you anyway. Thank you so much to Aldo Kane. Go watch the full interview. There's there's more on this on the full interview. Um, or. Get Aldo's book, and I'm not just saying, it, I, I've got, I got the book myself, um, and I listened to it through audible.com, and I'm, I'm not just saying it's a great segue, but they are giving away a free copy of Aldo's book. If you use the link in the description, you can get a free copy of Aldo Kane's book, and I fully recommend doing it. Like, it's my favorite book of the military guys, and I love all the military guys' books, but this was a favorite one because of all these kind of stories that are in there. Uh, so go check that out. It is free. Today's video is also sponsored by Mullingmirrors.com. Any support at Mullingmirrors.com gets put back directly in to making these projects and filming these projects. It makes it possible. So thank you so much to everybody who's done that. Go follow me on Instagram if you want to see my training and what I get up to and my ice baths and all that kind of stuff, at Jordan Mulligan, brother. Um, but go inspire some change, guys. Have a blessed and productive day. Share this video, comment, like, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.